Good morning, Dr. Olivier Belton. Uh, thank you for appearing on Brainwaves today. Hi, Brandon. Thank you for having me today. It's a pleasure. Great. Uh, so you are uh, an assistant professor of uh, psychiatry at um, Perelman School of Medicine at Univers University of Pennsylvania. That's correct. And you have won the uh, the Imro Rising Star Basic Research Award for your research uh, on mice to uh, find a better way to uh, diagnose and treat uh, depression and anxiety disorders. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, and I have a few questions for you about your research that I think will interest some of our viewers. Um, let's get started. So uh, the first question I had was, uh, it's basically, you, you found a gene uh, called HDAC6, which might serve as a biomarker to diagnose and a target to treat susceptibility to clinical depression or also PTSD. When you started your Rising Star funded research in 2010, did, did you have an inkling about this gene or did it, your discovery of the gene's effects kind of come out of the blue? Yeah, so we, we're, we're not looking for this gene really, we, we sort of stumbled uh, on it when we were searching for biological signatures of uh, resilience in mice uh, using a method that's called gene microarrays. Uh, this is a tool that, that we can use to ask at the genome-wide level which genes uh, change their expression when, when some mice are exposed to a very severe form of stress. And here we're, we're exposing the animals to a bully uh, and the, the, the mice are, uh, have to leave constant, in constant um, contact with this bully. And this is one of the, the, the worst things that can happen to them uh, in, the la in the lab. And so uh, when we did that and we look at gene expression in the brain of these mice, we, we asked the question of, is there any specific genes that change their level uh, uh, in the animals that show resiliency uh, that are different from uh, what we see in the mice that show vulnerability to those threats? And so one of the, one of the genes that we, should, we, we found out of this very uh, consistent uh, response was this protein HDAC6 that was consistently reduced in the uh, animals that show resiliency to the threats. So that, that uh, that pushed us to look more into the details of what this, this gene and these proteins are doing in the brain. Okay, that makes sense. Um, wow. So um, basically you found that when this gene HDAC6 is overexpressed, um, it can make mice susceptible to depressive uh, or anxious behaviors in the face of stress. Um, you've also found that when you delete this gene in the mice's serotonin neurons, it makes a more resilient mouse. It kind of uh, prevents these symptoms from, from developing. Um, what specific behavioral differences did you observe in the treated versus the untreated mice? And, and then also, uh, as a follow-up question to that, uh, can you explain a little bit how um, HDAC6 deletion can make such a profound difference in the emotional state of, of mice? Yes, so that's a great, great question. So uh, what what we see is that resin seem to be able to reduce these le levels of this uh, better than uh, the mice are vulnerable to stress, and somehow this may participate uh, a mechanism by which the body can naturally adapt to uh, the stress response. And so to, to test that hypothesis, we, we use a genetic way to reduce the level of that genes and, and, and look at what the consequences of these manipulations are. And so we, we, we did um, what, what we call a gene knockout, where we genetically can remove the or, or stop the expression of that gene. So that's what we did. We also found that the protein naturally is not expressed everywhere in the brain, but specifically in some cells, and one, one of the cells that uh, have the, the highest level of this protein in the brain are serotonin neurons that are very important for uh, the regulation of emotions and are the targets of current uh, antidepressants. And so, uh, and so th then when we found that we removed this protein from uh, serotonin cells, then uh, animals were not responsive to the stressor anymore. They, sh they show resiliency spontaneously to uh, the stressor. So, so that, that, uh, that's, that's what pointed to us that this protein may have a very important role in, in regulating uh, stress response and apparently does so by, uh, by working like a, <clears throat> a fuse or a, um, <clears throat> a negative regulator of the, st uh, the stress response by blocking the way a, s a stress hormone that's called uh, glucocorticoid uh, hormones are signaling in the brain. Okay, okay. Uh, well, it's, it, it certainly seemed to have a, a, a large effect, as you described, um, but 
this 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 has worked for mice, but it, you know, uh, how, how could this potentially work for people? Something like this, uh, similar there. Right. Well, yeah. Right. So obviously, in people, we cannot uh, we cannot stop the expression of a gene. So um, so our goal here is to try to find some uh, some molecules, some drugs that could be used to uh, to reduce the activity of this uh, protein. Um, and actually, there are already some um, some companies that are uh, have made such uh, su such drugs, such molecules. So we we're starting interacting with these companies and test some of these uh, molecules in animals. And I guess the, we are at the step here in the discovery. We're trying to validate this uh, HDAX6 protein as an interesting target and try to give an incentive, maybe some some pharmaceutical company to to uh, to, to work and try to to make good. Uh, uh, molecules to, or drugs to inhibit this uh, enzyme for great. important of, of stress related disorders. Th that's great. So it's kind of, it's in an early stage of of, um, of discovery right now, which are kind of exactly. laying, laying the tracks for for drug development down the road um, and, and getting getting things started. So that's that's a that's a great start. I mean, that's, you've, you've really done a lot so far. Um, now. Once a therapy is developed based on uh, this um, this mechanism, if one can be developed, and it looks like it can, um, how would it benefit patients with depression or anxiety disorders like PTSD better than uh, current antidepressants would? So, like you know, possibilities, this could be used either as an, uh, a treatment in addition to current uh, uh, drugs. Um, to block maybe certain aspect of the uh, the symptoms that are not um, that are not addressed properly by by current treatments, or then this is something to define. Maybe it's possible that uh, inhibiting this enzyme could have uh, um, a mode of action that would be faster than current uh, treatments that take several weeks to months to to um, to produce therapeutic effect. So that that's some of the some of the things we're looking into. Okay, great. Well, uh, it could be a lot better. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, do, do, you observe, do you think that there could be a future where um, doctors might uh, genotype their patients, uh, maybe finding this HDAC6 gene overexpressed in their patients and then be able to treat them preventively for susceptibility to depression or PTSD or anxiety? That's a great point. So uh, if, if really that's an, such an important protein for the regulation of stress responses, uh, we may be able to look in uh, cells from patients and trying to see if uh, an individual has a higher or lower level of protein. And so that's one thing we're, we're looking at um, with a, a colleague of mine here at the University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Uh, Cheng Yu Han, who is also a, a co-PI on the, on the award from EMRO. Uh, we're using cells from the uh, nasal epithelium from the nose of uh, patients with depression that we, um, we culture. And then in this, we can use these cells to look at how uh, stress hormones uh, are signaling in, in these patients and to see if uh, the, the level of uh, the HDAC6 protein in their, in their nose cells um, may predict the way they respond to treatments or respond to stressors. And if it, if it proves to be a, a good predictor, then that's something maybe that could be used as a biomarker or to predict the response to treatments or things like that. Fantastic, fantastic. So. Um, well, that, that's all great news, uh, and uh, I want to thank you, Dr. Berton, for, uh, for appearing on Brainwaves today. And, uh, um, Thanks so. Uh, it's interesting stuff. Definitely, do you, I think people may have some questions for you online. Uh, are you all ready right. to answer some questions? I'd be happy to respond then. So thanks a lot for your, your support and uh, for having me uh, on Brainwaves. Absolutely. Uh, have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.